chapter 12. Let's get you guys every. <clears throat> okay. Let's remind ourselves on a couple of terms. Phased. Phased is timing. I need to adjust here. So outside in for, for, for um, focus. We never do inside out, that would defocus it. Outside in for focusing. Um, right to left for steering. You could do both. You could do right, left, and outside in at the same time so you could focus and steer at the same time. When we do a grayscale image with our linear, by the way, guys, we are creating the grayscale image, which is square. And then we may overlay a color box, which is steered. So for the square, it's just everything is straight down. For the, for the grayscale, everything is straight down. And then after that entire picture is made, Remember, this happens many, many times a second. Then let's use a color. Oops. Then for the color box, the, the beam is angled. It's steered one direction or another. Then we go back to the gray, and then we go with the color, gray color. Uh, you know what, let me add a layer here. Cool, now I won't, now I can just erase things easier. Okay, so phasing is timing. When we talk about the, the first phased uh, array we talked about all the way back on page 169 was a linear phased array. It phases, but it doesn't sequence. So the linear phased array, in fact, almost every single beam it puts out is, is directed one direction or another. So the phased array sends a beam off in this direction and then that direction and then that direction, and it ends out creating a triangular, triangular pie-shaped waveform, or I'm sorry, uh, screen. There's no sequencing on the linear phased array, because on the linear phased array, every single element is used every single time. The timing is different, but every single one of them is used. Then we move forward. There's a number of pages on that kind of shows steering and everything. I think we've gone over that fairly well. And then there's dynamic receive focusing, and then we move forward to an annular phased array. And then I'm gonna go jump all the way to the linear sequential array. Now, the original linear sequential arrays, the old fashioned ones, the bricks, they weren't phased, they only sequenced. Those don't exist anymore. Now we have phasing and sequencing in, um, in those in our linears. So sequencing, let's use a different color for sequencing. Is uh, let's say groups. So our first our first beam is created out of that group, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, 
six. Our second beam of sound. Six will be made out of that group. Third and so forth. And so we end out having a beam there, a beam there, hopefully not too many missed spots like that. And another beam. So by the way, this is how the other part of the picture is made. When I say the other part, first we learned that a beam goes down, it hits an object, and then something is reflected back. And the timing, I'm gonna put a little clock here. Whatever, that's a horrible clock, it looks like a broken wheel. All right, well, that's a clock, timing. Our, it's a range finding machine. If it takes 13 microseconds for that echo to return, then the machine knows that it was one centimeter deep and that's where it puts that echo that on that one pixel, pixel being just the smallest unit on the screen. That, that echo is placed now at one centimeter of depth. But we don't know laterally, where do we put this on the screen? Well, now we know laterally, laterally, where to put it on the screen. Because if it is seen, let's say it's purple, uh, we'll stick with the purple. If this object is seen at 13 microseconds timing, or so in other words, one centimeter away, we know it goes at one centimeter of depth on the screen, but we know also, or the machine knows, that this particular beam found this particular object by listening to its echo. So now we know that not only is it one centimeter deep, but it's, um, well, I, uh, um, you know, in the, in, the, in the middle left of the screen, you know, the, to, to the left of the screen, to the right. It, it now knows where to put this echo laterally because it came from that particular beam. Anyway, that's a little bit out of uh, totally relevant. It's something you, not, you need to know, but a little bit outside of this um, chapter. So um, linear sequential arrays, 120 to 250 rectangular shaped piezoelectric materials, about a wavelength in width. Oh, that was something else I want to talk about. And up to 10 centimeters long, so 10 centimeters. That, those are the old bricks. And like I said, they weren't, this was before they made the curved and before uh, they made um, phased so you couldn't steer. So you had to have a transducer bigger than a baby's head in order to see a baby's head. Otherwise, the head would be too big for the screen or for, the, for all of your beams together. By the way, on this type of this linear sequenced array, that might be the face of the transducer, but it is not the aperture. Now remember the aperture is the width of the beam. So, Here's the aperture for the green beam. This was the aperture, you know, basically from here to here, 
for the uh, light blue and that purple beam, the aperture was from here to here. Makes sense. The aperture is not the whole face. On the first one we talked about, the linear phased array, where every single one of these is used every single time, every element is used every single time, then the face of the transducer actually is the aperture. That seems crazy. It seems, that seems crazy because that, that means the aperture, if you can see my fingers, is on a typical linear phase is that big. That is a horrible width of a beam. That's not a laser beam, that's a, that's a cheap Lowe's flashlight. Yeah, I have to think about that. Anyway, um, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, remember on page 180, uh, the subsetting beam steering does not describe steering because it says with a linear sequential array, a small group of crystals are fired simultaneously to create sound beam. The sound beams are parallel to each other um, and, and, and are typically directed straight ahead, which is kind of the opposite of steering, right? Um, so that's just, just keep in mind that that one is uh, mislabeled, I would say. Beam focusing, oh boy, they talk about, okay. In earlier models, this is page 181. In earlier models, beams were focused conventionally with curved active elements, kind of an internal focus, or by placing a lens uh, in front of the active elements, an external focus. In this setting, focusing characters were fixed and the sonographer could not alter them. But in modern linear, the ones that we use, um, it is electronically. So let's just remind ourselves, an internal focus would, well, uh, let's zoom up. So we can... So an internal focus would be like literally taking each one of these elements and instead of being flat, they'd be a little rounded like this. So each one of the, so it's, like, it's almost like each one of these has its own little, its own little uh, curvature. Although, boy, that's, that's hard for me to imagine exactly how that would work. But that's, that would be an internal focus. And then an, an external focus. Um, yeah, I guess you would focus each like a like a tiny little lens in front of each one of these. Though you would think, yeah, that's mm, mm, I don't know. I don't I actually I don't know how that worked. But suffice it to say, just know that the older ones had a fixed focus. Now we have electronic focusing, and and I know I've done this before, so I'm just going to do this really quickly. Um. One, two, three, four, five. Da, 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 da. One, two, three, four, five. Da, 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 da. So outside in. If the number one, well, let's say, uh, um, yeah, number one goes first, and two, then three, then four, then five. The number one bubble is out here because it's it's been out the longest. It it was produced first, and then. The number two bubble is a little bit behind that, and number three, five, and all the way across, and it's in the same thing. Whoops, over on this side. Obviously, I've missed a lot of them, but now we've created our we've created our electronic focus down to there. That's phasing. Oh, so what I just accidentally did, and, and that's okay. I used the entire transducer to focus a beam. 
by making that accident, I've actually made this transducer into a linear phased. The whole face was used. But that's not how this one works, right? Because we're actually talking about linear sequenced. So let's, since I screwed up, now I got to do this over again. One, one, two, two, three, three. That's a bit of an exaggeration, but you kind of get the point. Right, does that make sense? Because I didn't, I shouldn't have used the entire face. We're only making this beam here. So only those elements were used. That's sequencing and phasing at the same time. We sequenced and then we phased to make it focused. Um, received focus is dynamic. Boy, um, image shape is generally rectangular. Yeah, we could, we could, we could vector it so that the, Im so generally our image is rectangular. We can vector by steering and steering and not steering. So if you kind of like steer in both directions, you create a vector. So that's possible. And of course, we could also take the entire grayscale and steer it. But generally speaking, it is a rectangular. Um, damaged element, we damage this element. We have, we have a shadow, we have dropout underneath that element. Okay, then I didn't draw. That's what I should have taken the time to draw. Let's get just get rid of some of this ugliness here. Well, shoot, I wanted or needed, I should say, a I don't know, guys, what do you think? Am I able to manipulate this? No, I can't. All right, never mind. Darn it. Okay, well. Curved transducers. So this looks like a smiling robot, a smiling Cylon. Um, okay. Crystals number and shape: 120 to 250. Um, once again, each crystal is about a wavelength in size. So so far, the same thing, same amount of crystals. Um, about a wavelength and width. They actually, they, some of these transducers have more than more than that, but uh, that's fine, 120 to 250. Beam steering, some, but not all the crystals are fired simultaneously. Um, uh, uh, sequencing, the beam is directed straight out. So it's not really steering, even though on um, page 187, it does say uh, it's electronic steering, it's not really electronic steering, it is simply steered by the shape. So if we, if we go with this, with this sequence or group, we're gonna create a beam that goes in that direction. And we use this group, and it's supposed to be a nice color. Mm 
and that goes in that direction. And this is the gap right here between the two is going to cause more problems the further away from the transducer we get. So just like with the vector, um, the vector shape of the mechanical or the linear phased array, uh, the farther away you get, the bigger the bigger the space is in between beams. So there's a little bit of a loss of information the farther away you get away. Um, beam focusing can do uh, electronically. So let's go back to this guy, uh, this blue one. One, one, two, two, three. So we create a, a wave front. Let's say it was focused to this point. So a little bit of a curve in that wave front forces that beam to narrow. And then by the way, I, I know I've told you this before, afterwards, the waves actually inflect and then they'll spread out forever. They'll never, they'll never come back together again. Uh, damage crystal, same thing. You damage this crystal, and, but you have, um, you have this as a sequence group you're simply gonna have dropout underneath that crystal, loss of information. It's not producing sound, nor is it listening to sound. So it's a double whammy. Ah, vector arrays. Okay, so, uh, so hopefully, um, hopefully this all makes sense with the with this guy here. In fact, let me shoot. I, I, Is that straight? I guess it's straight enough. Okay. Okay. All right, now I'm just getting frustrated. Vector arrays, page 186, how fun. A vector array is a combination of linear sequential and linear phased, sloped phased and linear patterns about five this second, called vector or virtual sector. Okay, so. I was gonna say, I didn't do it, Kurt. <laughs> uh, be careful, if I, sound like a, if I sound like a robot now, it's your fault. No, you were sounding that way before I came out and said I didn't do it. Uh, okay. Am I, I'm still a robot? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, Amber, I think I'm going to put you in charge. Yay. 